You must extinguish this fear of failure and embrace it. This one is like driving what Indonesian people living in Africa. Society is totally why do they go to school? The universal power to touch yourself. My soul. internet friends are my real friends. The worst possible thing you can do in an accident. What is body language? What is home? Just listen. I will open this presentation with one word. Indigenous. Now if you guys hear this word, I assume that these are the first few things that came to your mind. And why did I open this presentation with this one word? Well, it's because it has something to do with me, part of my identity. I was born into a family that is part of all these indigenous people. The village that I come from is called Bungaya, a small village located in East Bali. And not so many people know this, including the Balinese, that Bungaya is actually one of the native villages that still remain today, besides the more famous Tenganan village. And because it is indigenous, it has many unique cultures that other Balinese villages don't have. One of them is the Deutruna tradition, and these are temple attendants. De literally means female virgin, and Truna means male virgin. The girl right there is my cousin, by the way. And there are ranks for these temple attendants. So the first or the lowest rank is called De or Truna. And then once they get married, and if they choose to continue on becoming temple attendants, they will automatically be elevated to a higher rank called Watunda, and then comes Vukabayan, and then Wasala, and then finally the highest one is Wamantan. Another one that is unique about Bungaya is the ceremonies. Once in every two years, there will be a cow sacrificing ceremony called Nabukin Kabirit. The cows will be tied on to a banyan tree, and then later on, the temple attendant with the highest rank will go around and stab the cow one by one. I know it might sound brutal to you guys, but to us, we believe that the cows that are sacrificed are holy cows, and that in their next life, they will reincarnate as a creature of a higher level. And if I write about my background on my biography, I'm pretty sure people will picture me looking like this, or my family looking like that. I'm not sure if the thought of me going to international school in Bali would ever cross their mind. I have been going to green school for five years now, along with Gika, Isami, and Dylan. These were the seniors of the first year, but now there's only four of us left. I remember being in the classroom on the first day of school. I was just so surprised at the difference between the learning environment at school and the previous public school that I went to. Everyone was Westerners and they were talking English. There was even a guy with an afro. <laughs> I interviewed some of the green school students here about what they felt like when they first entered green school. Gika said it was scary, nervous, but it made her nervous, but it was exciting at the same time. For Alicia, on her first day of school, she felt like an alien that just got to a planet that she had never been to before. So strange, everything was so different. Well, indeed it was. It's my fifth and final year now at Green School. My life at school is a, a multicultural world where many cultures meet and combine together, creating a unique mix. And it does take quite a while for me to understand this kind of world. And since there are more Westerners at school than Indonesians, I got exposed to my friends' cultures every day, and I had to adapt to these. New learning environment, different learning style, language, and body language. Actually, I have a story for this one. It was my birthday, and it was actually the first birthday of the year at school. Everyone was congratulating me, and the girls in my class were giving me hugs. It was the first time I received so many hugs, and back then, I wasn't used to being hugged because in my culture, it's not normal. And then, one of my classmates, a boy this time, wanted to give me a hug. And because I didn't know that it was a friendly thing, I refused. I feel bad for doing so. <laughs> and another thing that I had to adapt to was the way people address other people. 
So in Indonesian culture, when we're addressing someone older than us, we have to use the term kakak, which means older. And I noticed that in the Western culture, there's no such thing. And back then, I would feel uncomfortable when someone younger than me called me straight by my name without using that term. The list goes on and on and on. Moving to a different culture is like moving to a different country where you have to adapt to basically everything. And there were so many things that I had to adapt to. And now, since five years have passed, the green school culture starts to seep into me. Now I feel totally comfortable being hugged, giving hugs, having someone younger than me call me straight by my name without using kaka. And it was the beginning of this school year when I met Chitra, a ninth grader. And when she found out that I was in grade 12, she automatically went like, oh, then I have to call you Kaira. And then I said straight away, nah, you don't have to call me like that. You're not that younger than me anyway. Well, back then, I would feel uncomfortable when someone younger than me addressed address me straight by my name. But now, it doesn't really matter. Living in two different cultures isn't always fun. While I have multicultural world at school, at home, I live in a Balinese environment. I am more familiar with the Balinese culture because I have been living in it longer. As well as living in two different worlds give colors to my previous gray life. Sometimes I also feel like I'm not quite a part of either of them. It feels pretty much like this. At school, for example, when I'm trying to introduce a part of my Balinese culture, sometimes my friends don't quite understand what I'm trying to say. In the Balinese environment, it's been harder for me to introduce part of the green school culture to friends, family, neighbors, who have no exposure to Western culture. To a small extent, living in two different roles makes Kika feel less at home when things from school and at home are different. I agree with her. And this situation has inspired me to do this Greenstone project, and it raised the question, what is home? I looked up definitions of home on the internet, and here's one of them. A place where one lives, a residence, a dwelling place together with the family or social unit that occupies it, a household, the native habitat, as of a plant or animal. I also interviewed some of my friends about their own definitions of home. And Suratri, home for her is the feeling of being comfortable and safe, while at the same time she feels like she could prosper and grow. Certain people and places give her this feeling, so it's rare for her to adapt quickly to new places, even in her behavior or routines will feel uncomfortable in an unfamiliar place. And my own definition of home is an environment or a place that offers not only security, but also a sense of connection and belonging. And when someone asks me where I'm from, I would say straight away, Bali, or Karangasam specifically. And for some of you guys here, it might be harder for you guys to answer that question because you guys might have been living in many different places away from your home country. And this feeling of living in two different cultures at the same time is quite similar. Earlier I said I had to struggle with the things resulting from two words colliding together. And when there's black, there's also white. Living in this alien world is giving me an opportunity to look at things from two different perspectives. Gives me time when I'm about to make a decision. decision. Another one is being adaptable to changes because every day I bas basically have to switch between the Balinese culture and the green school culture like a snap of a finger. For Alicia, she's happy to be able to meet a lot of people from all different sides of the world. It challenges her more and more every single day, giving her all the opportunities that she knows she wouldn't get if she wasn't here in green school. For Gika, it raises her confidence. So to sum it up, this whole experience is bizarre, colorful, but confusing at the same time, which I have painted here on this canvas. side over here, as you can see, is supposed to describe the colorful side of living in two different worlds. This one represents the confusing side. And this one is supposed to represent the bizarre side. And I, this three eyes, I feel like everyone's looking at me because just because I'm different.
So when two worlds collide into each other, it's not like math, where there's a, an equation for everything and answers to questions are definite. And each person also has their own equation, which means that people interpret different cultures in their own way. Sometimes it's also like nature, where many unexpected things often occur. But to me, the most important thing right now is the sense of belonging. And, well, to me now, the Green School's environment feels home to me. I feel a sense of connection and belonging that is especially hard to break in such a friendly school environment. But since it can be as difficult as getting lost in a jungle, having a sort of a compass will be very helpful and I hope in the future there will be like a compass for each of the Indonesian students that are coming here so that they don't get lost and confused. But otherwise, I'm glad to be living in these two worlds colliding together. Thank you.